Hey VC, good morning, it's Glenn Calloway from the basement. This video is the second in a series called Spotlight On. I was trying to figure out who to do second. I did David Bromberg first, if anybody hasn't seen it, please watch it. I think it was pretty informative. It may have turned you on to a new artist. Um, this one is inspired, really, by my friend Elliot Cruz. Elliot just did an amazing video on the history of bluegrass. Uh, Elliot and I share a love of this music, and uh, I think he's an awesome guy, and he did an incredible job. Uh, made it really interesting, informative, told some great stories. Uh, the, uh, the history of bluegrass is really interesting, uh, just the characters and, uh, you know, their relationships and it's just, uh, really, really an interesting story, a great genre of music if you can get into it. So, um, hopefully I'm not taking anything thunder away from, uh, Elliot because I'm just going to focus on one artist, Earl Scruggs, one of my musical heroes. Um. So let me tell you a little bit about Earl. Earl was born January 6th in 1924 in Flint Hill, North Carolina. If you know anything about Flat Scruggs and Earl's instrumentals, he has a song called Flint Hill Special. Earl passed away March 28th, 2012. Um, Earl started playing the banjo. His father had a banjo, and Earl started playing the banjo like when he was four or five years old. And uh, basically, the banjo playing around then was, uh, as Elliot described, was a, a claw hammer style banjo um, where you would just pick and strum, pick and strum, pick and strum, or pick and two strums, whatever the patterns were. And then uh, somebody started to develop a two-finger style. I'm not quite sure how that would work. Being a three-finger picker, I, I was trying to figure out how could you make a melody out of the two fingers. And I don't know what they were doing back then, but uh, I don't know. So anyway, um, Earl had a cousin or an uncle or something. Uh, Smith Hammett, his name was, who played banjo and started to play around with three-finger style. Uh, Earl started to pick up on that. There was also another guy that's kind of famous in the area, Snuffy Jenkins, who was also developing a three-finger style. So Earl was working on that, and uh, I don't know, I guess eventually took it to another level and introduced it to the world. Um, one thing about bluegrass music, timing is just like if you become a bluegrass musician, you end up with a impeccable timing. There's there's no sloppiness in bluegrass. It's not like rock and roll. Like when you watch the Stones on stage, they're just kind of you know, it sounds raw and kind of a bit rough and edgy. It's bluegrass isn't like that. It's very precise. You got to be on it constantly. It's like so learning the banjo. I uh, I found that like. If anything I've learned from playing music is from playing bluegrass music is my timing's good. So <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so to work on timing, Earl's brother, one of his brothers played the guitar. I can't remember, maybe both of them did. He had two brothers, uh, Horace and Junie. And uh, Earl used to take one of his brothers and they would start at the front of the house and they would start playing a song. And then they would walk in opposite directions around the house, still playing and meet up, walk around each other, meet up in the front of the house again and see if they're still in time with the song they're playing. And they did that and did that and did that until they were like just perfect. Pretty cool, I think. Great story. Anyway, so Earl joined uh, the Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys in 1945. I think he was around 19 or 20 years old when he joined with Lester Flat. That was kind of the uh, um, the historic bluegrass boy band, the bluegrass boys band, um, with Bill and Earl and Lester, Chubby Weiss, great great band, awesome. Um, they put 
what they would call then string music or hillbilly music, old time music, on the map, became very popular. 1948, three years later, Lester and Earl leave to make some real money, or make more money, and start their own band. Became extremely popular through the 50s and uh, into the 60s, where they became household names from the television show, The Beverly Hillbillies. Earl wrote the theme song, The uh, Ballad of Jed Clampett. Um, everybody brought that, that brought the banjo into everybody's living room. Uh, amazing. There isn't anybody who's my age who doesn't know the Ballad of Jed Clampett. It's as well known as any rock song. Um, from there, the funny thing was though, they, they, they recorded the Ballad of Jed Clampett with Lester singing and somebody at CBS didn't like Lester's voice on it and they hired another guy named Jerry Scoggins to do the vocal. So. When you watch the Beverly Hillbillies or hear the theme song on the TV show, it's not Lester singing. Earl had also written a, a very famous uh, instrumental, Foggy Mountain Breakdown, which became famous in 1967 as the uh, ongoing theme song in the movie Bonnie and Clyde, which was a huge hit movie. Um, so Foggy Mountain Breakdown was everywhere. Uh, 69... Earl and uh, Lester split up, and Earl joined his sons, Gary and Randy, and formed the Earl, Gra er, Earl Scruggs Review, which was not a bluegrass band, but a folk rock, country rock band. They actually rocked pretty good. It's a really good band. Um, I've got a couple of records here, probably, I can show you with that. Yeah, here's the Eurostrokes review. There we go, great band. This is an excellent album. There's a song on this album, the last song. It says, uh, Be My Woman Tonight. It's like a heavy blues song. It's really good. Anyway, Earl learned how to play. Uh, well, he, he said what happened was he would be at home and his sons, Gary and uh, Randy, who, Randy's a great player and became a, a, a great producer as well. Um, and Gary sang, and they used to play at home, invite their friends over and have these jam sessions, and Earl used to sit in. And that's how they kind of developed the, the review. So uh, great, great, uh, great, great band they were. I saw them in, uh, I'm going to say, 77, 78 at Ontario Place Forum in Toronto. I don't know if you can see this or not. I'll try and show it to you. That's uh, my, the picture of Earl Scruggs that I took on stage there. I hope it, you can see it. Um, also ended up with an Earl Scruggs autograph uh, in the 80s. The Gibson came out with a uh, Earl Scruggs model banjo. His banjo is famous, the Gibson Master Tone banjo. It's like what every every banjo player strives for. A pre-war, pre-World War II, five-string Master Tone Gibson banjo. They can go upwards. Uh, I don't know if prices have dropped because of you know what's going on in the world now, but that, they could go up to eighty, a hundred thousand dollars for a mint original five-string. A lot of people, what they do is four strings were very popular back then uh, because of jazz. They played four string banjos and Dixieland jazz bands and stuff. So it was basically the same pot assembly and um, they uh, would get someone to make a, a five string neck for it. So there's a lot of those banjos around and even there are very highly sought after, beautiful banjos. Anyway, um, one of the gentlemen who was involved in creating the uh, Earl Scruggs model banjo working for Gibson. His name was Greg Rich. I had the opportunity to kind of get to know him on the internet a little bit on a, on a website uh, called Banjo Hangout. If anybody's interested, if you're a banjo player or you're interested in banjos, that's a great website to discuss that music. Anyway, he used to get Earl to come in and sign the, uh, the decal that would go inside the uh, resonator of the banjo and um, he kindly sent me one. So that's an original Earl Scruggs autograph on Gibson Master Tone label, which I'm uh, extremely proud to own.
Uh, here's a couple of uh, Flat and Scruggs albums. Flat and Scruggs at Carnegie Hall. This was recorded in 1962, I believe. So think about it. Carnegie Hall, classical music, uh, you know, probably the Tony Bennett's of the world or whoever would play there. Uh, a hillbilly band playing Carnegie Hall. That just shows how popular Flat and Scruggs were. This is an awesome album. Flat and Scruggs at Carnegie Hall. Another older album, Hard Traveling. Check this out. This is a mono, original. 2i Columbia. Great album, too. There was a movie, which I've never seen, called Banjo Man. It was kind of a tribute to Earl Scruggs. Um, they had a bunch of people just kind of playing with him and stuff. Um, this is the soundtrack from it, the original soundtrack album. Uh, Earl Scruggs Review, Joan Baez, The Birds, Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, Doc and Merle Watson, Ramblin' Jack Elliott. Banjo Man. This is a pretty good album. Yeah, so that's all I had for, for that. So, um, yeah, so Earl played with the uh, Earl Scruggs Review for uh, I don't know how many years until he retired around 19, uh, from touring around 1980 or so, and uh, just kind of hung around at home playing with his friends and that, and, and then passed away 2012. Too bad, but one of the uh, great pioneers of music. I'm going to attempt to uh, show you a little about what Earl came up with. And maybe you'll give you a greater understanding. Excuse me. It's early in the morning, so excuse the mistakes and whatever else. So anyway, um, two finger picking, like I said, I can't quite understand what they were doing. Claw hammer style, which was very popular, was more of a They were kind of the two styles that were going on before Earl and uh, whoever else in the uh, North Carolina area was starting to play around with the three finger style, which was more on a series of roll patterns so you know like this or you can pinch you know and they mix them together so then what Earl did when he was playing these patterns he started to add rolls something like pull-offs. Pull off the strings, whatever. He came up with all these slides. So then you start to hear kind of the more what you would normally hear in a bluegrass song. came up with Something like that.
that. Anyway, you get the idea of what Earl was up to, how it developed. The man was a monster musician, um, a pioneer. There's not many of them, you know, when you think about people who invented genres of music. There's not many of them in the world, and uh, Earl, Bill Monroe are two of them. Um, again, please check out Elliot's video. It's very cool, very important to watch as far as I'm concerned. He's going to do another one to a part two. I've been encouraging him to, and I'm looking forward to it. Elliot, I love you, buddy. You did a great job. And um, thanks, everyone, for watching. We'll talk soon. Take care.